Hi everyone, I hope you're doing well. Today's video is going to be about my mega planner. I'm actually going to do part one and part two videos uh, because I just don't think I'm going to be able to be brief when I start talking about all of this. So part one video is this one and it will be all about this cover and how I made it. And then part two, which I will have linked below, will be all about the inserts in here because I made some folders and things. So I'll go into that in the second video. So let's just get into this. I'm going to go through the specs of this first before I start going off on all kinds of random rabbit trails about it. So this leather is from Springfield Leather and I bought seven square feet of it and I, I just could not be happier. Seeing seven square feet of this leather is just, it was almost more than my little heart could handle. And I, I was actually talking to Robin from Talks from the Heart and I confessed to her that I had bought seven square feet and she reacted by saying, what in the world are you going to do with seven square feet? Are you just going to make a blanket or something? And I was like, yeah. <laughs> so I did kind of wrap it around myself when I first got it. It was awesome. So anyway, I will have that shop and anything that I mentioned in this video, I will link all of it in the description uh, in case you're curious. So I bought the leather and let me tell you, see, I'm already getting on a tangent. Okay, let's just keep going with this. So I bought the leather there. This is, um, this, the measurements. Okay, so first of all, this is standard traveler's notebook size, but it's way bigger than that because obviously it's meant to hold a ton of inserts. And I did that on purpose. That was the type of design that I wanted. So this actually measures laid flat open edge to edge. It measures 12 inches. Now, if you buy this size cover from any maker, it typically measures between 10 or 11 inches, uh, depending from edge to edge. So mine is made fairly wide and that is because I wanted to put six strings on the inside and I've even jump banded some inserts in here because I have more than six but I wanted a spine that would accommodate that many strings because I just wanted that option and then the height of this I think is a a little bit taller than the norm from other makers. So this is actually nine inches tall. And as you can see, it was so simple to make because it was literally a matter of cutting straight lines, cutting out a rectangular piece and punching, let's see how many, one, two, three, four, eight, nine, ten, ten 10 holes and then adding elastics. So I made this really simple on myself. I was very safe when I went into this because this was one of my favorite pieces on the hide that I received and I didn't want to ruin it. So I decided not to go for any stitching and I didn't need it. This is such incredibly thick leather and then stiff on top of that. So this worked for me just as it is without any additional pockets or anything on the inside. I will go ahead and take out all of the inserts so that I can just kind of concentrate on the leather. Okay, so there we go. As you can see, there are six strings on the inside. I actually stole these elastics off my uh, Lady Falcon Traveler's notebooks that I already had. These are so thin and they're so stretchy. And I don't know where I can get my own. So these are actually two sets of strings from two separate traveler's notebooks. And that's why there are two knots because I rigged them all kinds of strange to get them in here. And I will say when I decided to put this together, I told myself that I was not allowed to spend any money 
on on this on the cover on uh, the all of the inserts and everything so everything that I used to make this I had already purchased it it was already in my stash and that was such an interesting challenge and it was actually a really great way for me to look at what I had and get creative with it and utilize it in um, really different ways. And I don't know, with the times being what they are right now, it was it was a, an appropriate decision not to spend any extra money on this setup or the making of. Okay, so when I decided I wanted to do this, and I'll tell you how it happened. It was out of the blue one night, I had the thought, wouldn't it be really convenient if I could just combine all of my planners into one setup and that way I don't have to worry about this planner being over there and blah, blah, blah. I combined about uh, four planners slash trackers into this setup. And they were ones that I've always been using in some form or another, but I never actually had them all within the same setup. So I thought now is a good time as any to try that out and put them all together, even though I know it's going to be ginormous and just see how it is, you know, for fun. And um, it's actually worked out so much, so much better than I could have even predicted. I mean, I was really excited about it to begin with, but I mean, I've been disappointed by my ideas before. So this is awesome. I, I spoke to Robin and told her that I just had this random idea to combine everything. And she said, well, you need to get off the phone with me and make that right now. You need to make it happen, put it together. And so I did. I, that same evening, I pulled out my roll of leather and I started working on this. I decided how much bigger I needed this to be and cut it out, punched the holes and did all of that. And then on a separate evening, I made all of the inserts to, to go in here. So most of this stuff, as is my usual way of doing things, I just kind of eyeballed stuff. I didn't think too hard about anything. I just kind of dove in because when I want something, I want it now. And when I had everything available to me, I knew I could do it now. So then it was just like tunnel vision trying to get it all done. Okay. This was the only cutter that I had. And this is old. The blade has not been replaced and it has cut through many, many, many things. And it was such a challenge to cut through this leather with such a a small and dull blade, but I did it. So the edges are definitely not perfect at all. And I'm, I'm okay with that. I mean, this leather is totally rugged, so it kind of goes with that theme. So I have a bigger mat than this. This is the cutting mat that I use and I have a much larger version. So that's what I put under it. I used my metal ruler with the cork backing, which is super important. And what I have found since making this is I will cut out a piece of cardstock in the size that I want, and I'll lay it on the inside of this leather, and then I'll take a pen and actually draw it out, and then I'll take my metal ruler, place it on the line, and then slice where I need to slice. So far, I have found that that is the easiest way to get a nice cut out of this leather because it's so tough. And I also invested in the big guy um, after this was done. This doesn't count as me spending money on this. That's what I'm telling myself because I didn't actually use this on here. I used it on something else. <laughs> so um, this makes all the difference having a bigger, tougher blade and a fresh blade. So I'm going to have to also invest in a pack of extra blades or a way to sharpen that or whatever. Anyway, so that uh, basically getting a custom size is one of the reasons that I chose to make this cover myself. 
And if you've been following me for a little while, you might also know that I have also been dabbling in some leather work. You know, I've been adding front pockets to some of my covers that I already own and things like that. I've never actually, you know, cut a whole piece and made a whole piece um, completely like this. I've always just altered stuff that I've already had. So this was a first for me, but you know, it was also pretty basic. And with that said, making an entire piece from scratch was less daunting to me because I had been getting a little braver in the things that I've been doing with leather. And, you know, I needed the custom design. I needed to have six strings. I needed an extra wide spine. I didn't want any spine reinforcement because I just don't prefer that. And I wanted a vertical elastic closure like this. And, you know, through no fault of their own, all the makers that offer beautiful leather covers, they're very limited, you know, in, in what they can do. So, the makers that do offer customizations, the types of customizations they offer are very limited and none of them met my needs. And then in any maker that offers this leather, you do not have a guarantee of the type of texture that you will receive. And that's just the nature of the beast. But I have been getting really weary of basically spending a hundred dollars easily on a cover just like this and basically buying it sight unseen and not actually knowing what I'm going to get until I get it. And I've been through so many covers and I've spent years purchasing covers and owning so many that I suppose I just got to a point where I want to know what I'm going to get because I've gotten so picky because I've been through this spectrum of possibilities. I know all the variations and I know what I want out of those variations. So I found myself getting more easily disappointed by the things that I was receiving. So, you know, when you get to that point, I just, I just decided to take matters into my own hands. I found a supplier that carried this leather and just went for it. And that brings me also to price. You know, I mentioned something like this is easily a hundred dollars and that's normal. You know, that's, that's typical and people are willing to pay that price. I was for such a long time and I have no regrets about that. Those were products that I was so happy to have. And I'll just point out when I thought about it, I bought seven square feet of this leather and it cost me $68 and change, including shipping. It was like $10 of shipping. So it was $68 total. And you know, this is 12 inches across. So say I get like six uh, covers out of it, exactly the same as this. And I'm using things that I already have like elastics and you know, tools. It's really like $12, honestly, that I spent to make this cover, which is kind of crazy to think about, you know, if, if you want to put in the time to, to do this kind of thing, it can really save you a lot of money. And I will say, as far as texture goes, when I bought that piece of hide, I didn't get to request the textures that I received on it, but I thought it was a better gamble to get a large piece of hide and be able to pick the texture that I want because I mean I've been through that experience where I've had my preferred texture on the back or on the inside or something and I got to a place where I was honest with myself and said if I get texture on those areas that is a waste for me it needs to be on the front so this was actually my favorite part of the hide that I received and I cut it in a way that captured every bit of it. This was actually at the very edge of the hide and I 
I struggled so bad with this blunt thing to try and trim this up to make it straight because it was like a little bit curved. And I did my best because I did not want to lose any of this at all. But it also made me wonder like, what was the piece that was <laughs> next to it? Like what was cut off of this? I want to see like this area. So anyway, being able to customize exactly the texture I want to capture and where I want it placed was really huge for me and all of my pickiness these days. And you know what? I find that I am not a painter or a sketcher or, or anything like that. That is just not what I find myself attracted to and that's not how I create. When I want to exercise uh, my creative muscles, I find that I like to make things like build things and doing something like this is exactly where I'm happiest when I want to be creative. I like to be able to make something and then use it, I suppose, and be able to continuously enjoy it by using it in some way. So I'm sure I'll be making more. Well, I say I'm sure I'll be making more, but I, I have started making some other pieces, just just experimenting. And before anyone asks, which I'm sure somebody's probably already asked before watching the whole video, but I am not planning on selling anything, opening up shop. I'm doing this like for purely selfish reasons so I can just have what I want. Um, but I don't have the time or the capacity or the will to want to make products like this for other people. And the volume, oh, like, yeah, it's just too overwhelming and it would take all of the fun out of it for me at this point anyway, because I'm still learning and everything. Like, no, that's, that's not on the table for me. Um, the next piece that I'm thinking of building I'm actually going to attempt some stitching but I I have to practice with that first and figure out the best way I like it and all of that anyway I hope that if anything this inspires you to create something for yourself because I know times are pretty tough right now and financially um you know, finances are just such a huge burden for so many people, but you can still enjoy these things if that's what you like. And you can make things for yourself for a small fraction of what you would pay for something ready made. You can be creative and think outside of the box and just design something for yourself for not much money. Most of us have a lot of these tools at our disposal anyway. And you know, all you really need to do is get a hold of some leather and you know, make yourself happy. Okay, I think I've covered everything that I want to say about this cover. Oh, I did end up purchasing this on Amazon. Um, this was shared by Eberhardt Studio. She said that she had purchased this and found that the elastic was really springy. This is my preferred elastic of choice. I don't like it when it's super, super stiff. Uh, so thank you to Yayi for suggesting this because I bought it after her recommendation. And that is what I actually used here. I had a smaller elastic, a, a tighter one, and it was actually pulling a little too much. So I did end up buying this after the fact. Um, but as you can see, it comes with a pack full of colors and things. So I'll be using those down the road as well. So I ended up buying that. And then the other thing is... I'm, I might want to buy a uni style fit multi pen because I have my homeschooling planner in here and I like to color code with that. So I'm saving up for that because I'm going to place a jet pens order at, at some point. I don't know. It's, it's not a necessity at this point. So I'm just going to kind of, kind of wait and see. I think that's it. I feel like I'm just rambling at this point. Okay. If you guys have any questions at all, I will be happy to answer them in the comments. Oh, I also, hold on, let me get the, 
oh, oh no. Okay, so I, I rounded these corners and I purchased this prior to deciding I'm making this. Um, I had these and they're just these round chisels, I, I guess. But I used these, um, my X-Acto knife was not making beautiful cuts at all to round corners. So I got these. I knew I'd be using them a lot more anyway. So I got these and was able to get prettier rounded corners. These need to be sharpened, but I'll link those. And I think that is really it. Those are all the tools that I used. And yeah, so I'm going to wrap it up here and get started on part two of this. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I hope you stay well and I will see you again soon. Bye.